Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we defeated the second Jabby tribe, along with a evil ally of Jabble who has betrayed his own kind and murdered his entire civilization. And now all the Jabbies that we left behind here have rotted away into the dust and are never going to return again. Mwah! Or they just left because we left the room and came back. Something like that. In this episode, we're going to keep on going forward and fight more enemies that I'm going to cut out because I have already seen them a million times already. I just realized there are a bunch of punies in the audience now. Apparently, there are even more punies that are holding out on us and it make our job more difficult because they're not helping us fight. Ooh, double corn. My favorite, except not really. I want double star points. I guess I can't complain about free corn. Get all those. Not a whole lot, actually. Uh, got this, got this. Nothing of really interesting interest here. Just a bunch of bushes that have nothing for us. What if we put the puny orb here? What does this do? Absolutely nothing, really. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and take it back and head back down. Or not back down. This is our first time going down to the ground. Behind this pipe is a star piece. Just making sure you know that. As opposed to not knowing that and just leaving this star piece here forever. Four of them. Ugh. Got that taken care of and we're good. Okay, so this thing up here we can't really do anything about it right now. We're just going to keep on going with what we got. What's in here? Uh, We got ourselves a lovely looking pedestal. It's got hearts around it. That means it must be good, right? Irony! That was not there before. I, wonder if I, I always forget to do that. I always want to check to see. I probably won't work, but like I wonder if you use flurry there, then will the pipe appear? It probably won't because story progression all that jazz, but whatever. What just happened? Hello. Man, you guys a dense, brilliant little trap, huh? And boy, did you bite on it. I saw you sticking that silly stone on a pedestal, so I made a fake one. Awesome! I mean, I knew it was great, but seeing you fall for it really gives me a warm fuzzy. Buh, buh, buh. Talk about complete idiots. You guys are so dumb it hurts. Anyway, with you fools out of the picture, I could take my time hunting the crystal star. Buh, buh, buh. And he's out of here. Mario, what are we to do? Uh, we have to find a way out of here. But what can we do? Uh, paper thin ability. See ya, suckers. Mwahaha. My, such wonderful drama. I imagine we have to do something now, don't we? Mario, think of something. I'm turning on you. Unfortunately, calling the puny elder will not get uh, the punies out of here, so we're going to have to think of something else. Let's see if we can go down here. Yes, we can. Okay, that's all I need to do. Pardon me a moment. Don't these odd columns look somewhat familiar? Hmm, they do. Okay, so Puny Star Moon Sun wasn't the combination we need to remember. We need to remember this combination. Sun Moon Puny Star. It all makes sense now. And speaking of star, Star Piece. Very, very convenient. Uh, nothing in here, but we hit that switch. We just stand on it. Oh, I feel I might swoon. What was that, I wonder? I feel you might swoon or whatever. Uh, we got nothing else in here. There's nothing to see over here. So we just got to backtrack over to the Puny Star Moon Sun. But this time, do a Sun Moon Puny Star, if I can remember that. Twinkle, twinkle, Sun Moon Puny Star. How I wonder what good commentary is like. Back over to the right wing of the dungeon, or I guess I should say the right branch of the tree. We got four switches here that magically appeared. If we hit them, it switches the image on there. So we got to change it to Sun, Mew, Moon, not Mew. Excuse me, Sun, Moon, Puny, Star. Down, left, up, right. Looks like something I would do if I were a graphic designer. And we did it! Hooray! We can enter this secret hole! And inside this secret hole we get... A typo! You got a super boots! Hooray! And hey, a treasure chest that doesn't curse us this time, instead it gives us Toadette! Hey there, I'm Toadette! Congratulations on getting the super boots! These cool kicks power up jump attacks! 
and you'll be able to use a new technique. So let's practice it, okay? If you press A at the right moment when jumping, you'll do a spin jump. Timing is everything. Press A in mid-jump. You're a natural! Wanna try it again? Uh, nope, I got the power of butt stomps. Okay, that's just super. Looks like you mastered the spin jump! You can smash through spots like this with your spin jump! That's it! You got it! You can use the spin jump in battle too! Give it a try! Well, I hope to see you again soon! Good luck on your adventure! Uh, Toadette's so much easier on the voice than Toad. So yes, with this new ability, we could go ahead and ground pound, which is going to be very, very useful. It will allow us to break these uh, platforms that we see right here. And enter new areas, which is very nice. And I like a flurry is flying around right there. Just jump over all these uh, platforms and get ourselves another shine spray. Very, very nice. Uh, down here, is there anything here for us? I don't think so, but can never hurt to check. Doesn't seem like it, so... Oh. There is another badge here that we can get. That is the charge badge. Remember Goombario's ability, how he was able to charge up and raise his attack power? That is basically what that badge is. It gives you another uh, option. Excuse me. Gives us you another option on the uh, tactics menu. So you can go ahead and charge up your attacks. It's kind of useful. It's kind of like Watt's ability back in the day, but in the form of a tactic. I don't know why I'm suddenly failing this right now. Uh, I'm trying to get all the badges, so I have to hurry up and try and do it. Uh, ground pound. There we go. Just jump and use coops. There we go. Charge badge. Add, tar add charge to your tactics menu. So now that we got uh, the ground pound with us, we can go ahead and backtrack through the entire area and get a couple things that we haven't been able to get before. I will meet you guys in just a moment. If you go back up here to where we saw this first uh, puny platform, or the Elder Orb platform, uh, you can go ahead and ground pound right here. You can see this little platform is popping up, and it gives you a star piece. This opens up a lot of star pieces to you. There are a lot of hidden platforms scattered throughout the world that we need to go ahead and ground pound in order to find multiple star pieces. It's kind of annoying, honestly, but we gotta do it because we're going for 100%. The next hidden platform is actually back up here in the cages. You're gonna want to go into the blue cage, I believe. And there's a star piece in here waiting for you. And yes, there are even uh, hidden platforms back in Rogueport and in Petalburg, so we're going to have to do a lot of backtracking once this chapter is over. But that's for later. Right now, let's go ahead and free all the punies. Back over here! Have no fear, punies, your saviors here! And they're just uh, huddled around that thing, they don't even care. They're like, orb, must touch, must touch! They don't even care that they're held captive right now. Go ahead and ground pound this thing, not too far into the middle because you don't want to fall down. Yes, but that is, yes, yes, never to get out of here! And now you just got to blow them all down. Whee! It's actually kind of difficult. Give me a second. Get on in there, punies. Come on, you need to like rearrange them. You gotta like let go of the puny orb so they can get back around and stuff. So they get stuck on the other thing on the other side. And it's really annoying. You gotta get the right, the correct camera angle. Come on, just two more. There's one. And there is one more annoying puny. There you go. Uh, I guess we can go down with them. And we're good. We are back, uh, coming full circle. So. Now that we have the ground pound ability, what exactly can we do now that we have all the punies with us once again and the ground pound ability? Well, we can backtrack, of course! Okay, it wasn't that terribly far. I thought it was a lot more farther. A lot more farther. Uh, I'm just gonna put it in here now. Ground pound on this platform. And blow them on into this area now, because this is the only place we haven't gone yet, so it must be the point of progress. Otherwise, we are sort of doomed, because I are I are out of ideas. I are good at talking and stuff. My brain am good thinking and such. Uh, go. There you go. Go down there, move the puny orb. Kind of wonder what they would look like if I had the orb up here, and then they were just derping around down there. I have no idea. Maybe they'd just be, like, looking up into the sky. Uh, I guess only one way to find out. Go right there come down and they don't really seem to care okay uh, I think we actually do need the orb so we're gonna go back up grab the orb waste more time because that's what midnight beyond does best and go back down and here we go it started raining since the last time I cut away so hooray for that uh, just keep walking across here we got an X nod that is gonna be very chump change for us
Oh, something that I should keep in mind now. Now that Mario's jump has increased, he could do two damage per jump. So now he's going to be doing a whopping four damage. So now the fight's going to be wrapped up even quicker from here on out. And something I really like about Mario's upgraded jump ability is that it doesn't change his jump pattern. If you remember in the first Paper Mario game when we got jump upgrades, it would change the speed of his jump. And I hated the ground pound speed. It would make it so difficult to do uh, power bounces. It was just super slow. I really didn't like it, but thankfully that is not the case in this game. You could do the ground pound... Uh, as a special attack in battle. Actually, I should show this off right now. You can ground pound on the field and have it count as a first strike, but I can't do that apparently. <laughs> okay then. Uh, you could go ahead and use the spin jump, not the ground pound, excuse me. And it will take up two FP, but it is a much more powerful jump. And there you go. So what's really interesting though, you could use the ground pound on the field to do a first strike. And if you do it like that, then it actually doesn't take up any uh, FP when you do it like that. So you could get the extra damage in without wasting FP. Very, very useful, but it's a bit more difficult to land a first strike with a ground pound than it is with a regular jump. And this is why I recommend you have the uh, multi-bounce badge equipped in this chapter because getting rid of... Uh, wow, that was horrible. <laughs> getting rid of mi uh, mini uxes when there are multiple ones on the field is very difficult. But I guess I'll just do it like this instead because I don't know how to do combos anymore. I just realized, like, they went up this butt and then two more came out. I don't want to think too far into that, but whatever. Jump, jump, jump. Okay, got that taken care of. Go ahead and use Flurry. I have no problem using FP right now because I am close to a level up, so we'll be getting uh, healed really soon. And he's going to do his little floppy flap attack again. A little floppity flop. Come on. I said battles are going to be a lot quicker this time. There we go, six star points for us. And very close to a level up. Get them corns. Uh, I believe there's one more star piece that we need to find in this area. It is down here somewhere, am I correct? Don't make a liar out of me, please. Uh, over here? No, no. I believe there is one more, but just not around here. Uh, let's go keep on going south, I guess. Oh my god, a lot of water. I forgot how long this place was. Um, I thought we were actually at the end of the dungeon, so should I end the episode? Eh, I'll keep going. Just gonna try and think smartly about all this. Um, we got ourselves some lily pads over here. Oh, I'm remembering this. I'm remembering this. Uh, can I jump across here? Of course, I gotta walk all the way back around. They're all like, oh, where'd he go? I have no idea. Uh, they cannot jump because they ain't got mad hops. So, of course, I don't have mad hops. Speaking of mad hops, uh, when trying to get that, um jump with coops uh i'll flash up on screen when i talk about that thing in hooktail castle and i had to like jump to uh get a badge or a star piece or something like that it took 20 stinking tries when i had to redo it again because i had the game over and i re had to repeat progress and stuff it was so stinking horrible uh, i'm gonna go up i believe yes we're gonna go up here uh switch to coops and gonna step on this platform, which lowers the switch so we can't hit anymore, but we just get off of it like this, and we're good to go. And he's drowning, oh no, Koops, I'm so sorry. Oh, he's right here. God, that was really stinking long and wet. Switch back to Flurry because I want her out. Uh, it's just a weird object right here. I guess they give you the continuity of how the switch is going up and down and whatnot. I appreciate it for that, I guess. A shrink stomp badge it makes enemies tiny when you step on them. Very cool. I like all the different jumping abilities. It looks It lets you play with whatever you want to do. And we got the dizzy dial right here. Uh, if you go up here... Uh, we're getting separated from the punies. Hopefully this isn't too terrible. Uh, this leads us back up here, wherever this is. Is there a star piece around here? I think there is, maybe, possibly. Oh wait, no, this is where we were before. We were going backwards. I just didn't recognize it because the water had been drained. And we were on the other side. I get it. We're going all topsy turvy. Apparently, that's a game, Yoshi Topsy Turvy. I've never seen it in stores before, but like I just sometimes remember that it existed, and like I don't ever remember seeing it in stores. It used like motion controls on the. Oh, it was motion controls on the Game Boy Advance, was it? It was weird. Another game that I don't see in stores anymore is Yoshi Touch and Go. It was one of the first games that got released for the DS. It was weird. It was like an on-rails Yoshi's Island who every level was auto-scrolling. And if you get hit once, then you're dead. It was really stinking annoying in that regard, but it was one of my first DS games and I sold it. So I'm kind of hoping to find it again. 
I'm really close to finishing my uh, DS and Wii collections. I only want two more games for the Wii, so then I'll end up having 100. I'm unsure if my last two Wii games will be either No More, he no More Heroes 1 and 2, or if they'll be, um, I think, Wii Ski and Snowboarding and SpongeBob Truth or Square. A uh, reason for this is just because I am um, wondering if No More Heroes 1 and 2 will get ported to the Switch, so if that's the case, then I'll go ahead and get the other two games because I want the variety and stuff. But if that's not going to happen, then I just sort of want them on the Switch because, or I want them on Wii because uh, apparently they're really good games and there's no more heroes coming out on the Switch of some kind. I just feel like it's going to happen eventually because the Switch is all about them ports and stuff. Uh, as for the DS collection, the only games I want left for that are uh, Yoshi's uh, Yoshi Touch and Go. I want to find that copy again. I've never had Pokemon Dash. I know that's not really a beloved Pokemon game, but I have been wanting it for so long. Like, I just never found it. Uh, what's oh no what's happening I've wanted uh, Pokemon Dash for so long I've only played it at friends houses and I've just never been able to have a copy of my own so I want to get that one day and then also uh, kind of a hard one to find is Chibi Robo the one Chibi Robo game that didn't come out in America so that's how you get to this room uh, it's called Welcome Home Chibi Robo Happy Rich Big Sweep it's actually a sequel to the first Chibi Robo game where you uh, take care as take care of Jenny as an adult which is really interesting but it never came out in America for whatever reason which is kind of lame so I uh, want to get that game as well at some point. We go in here. Hmm, let me see. That thing's got to be around here somewhere. But huh? What's that? Whoa, sounds like a mob. Better clear out. Yes, a mob of punies! Mwahaha! <laughs> and we lost some apparently. How does this keep happening to me? Why are you over there? Get back over here, ruining the dramatic tension. I recently got a deal or no deal for the Nintendo DS. No, not because of Steven George, sort of, but apparently the special edition that was on Walmart, like, it came with a carrying case, like a deal or no deal briefcase back in the day. And I was wondering if it would come with one uh, nowadays, so I went ahead and bought it for just 99 cents, and it unfortunately didn't come with the case, so. And I instead just got myself a new DS game that I'm never going to play. Puny Orb, there we go. Place in the Puny Orb. And... God, the GameCube controller vibrates like crazy back in the dizzy day. A crystal star appeared. I don't know why I couldn't just go into the bucket, but whatever. Oh, dear me. Mario, is it that the crystal star? Oh dear, that wretched beast again! Deary me. Buh, buh, buh. Man, am I lucky or what? Or am I just good? Oh, you say you need a crystal star, little crumb? Boom, falls right in my lap. Still, this is humiliating. You shouldn't have been able to escape that cell. So for insulting my awesome trap, I'm gonna repay you with a little present. Know what it is? Oh, just a little something I like to call a remote time pop detonator! I'm gonna use this to bury you in those squirmy punies and rubble. Sound fun? Well, enjoy your final minutes inside this dank old tree. And with that, pow, I'm gone. We have 300 seconds to get the heck out of here. I must say, I craved exciting times, but I never expected this. Let's go, quickly now. Yes, ever so quickly. We'll go ahead and take the puny orb. You actually don't need to take the punies with you, so it's not a terrible idea to just leave them down here in the bottom of the tree to die, but uh, I guess I'll just bring them with me for the sake of being a good Samaritan and all that jazz. Head on up here. Uh, this is a new location. I believe there's a star piece in here So Hello! So they're gonna force some fights on us to make it a bit more difficult. Can't flee this fight. Gonna jump on this dude. Thankfully we can take care of the X-Nauts in one hit with Mario now. And Goombella could get rid of them one hit as well now that we powered her up, but she's not out in the field right now, so we're gonna have to settle for Flurry. Come on, just hurry up and the bushes fall over. They don't hurt us. Ouch. Uh, go ahead and jump on him once again. Uh, if you have the timer run out, then it's instant game over in case you're wondering, so be sure to not let that happen, because that would be very unfortunate. 95 star points, very close to a level up. Hopefully we can find just one more enemy around here. There's a star piece that I was looking for. 
Uh, I think that's the last star piece in the great tree, so we don't have to worry about that any further. But I'm still going to be examining things because I'm super duper paranoid. Uh, I think we're good. So, unlock this. And I keep pressing A multiple times, so I keep locking it again. I didn't know that was even a thing. Okay, go in here. It's just that to make you panic a little bit more. I think there are more uh, X knots that are just scattered around the place to make it a bit more difficult for you to catch up. I hope we get one more level up before we uh, catch up to him, though, because of course he's going to be the boss of this area, so... I want to have just one uh, more fight so we can get ourselves that sweet juicy level up and I don't have to pay seven coins to heal. So those coins are important, you know. Uh, whatever, just go up here. If you don't remember the layout of the tree and you can't find your way back, then this could be a, a pretty difficult uh, task. But thankfully, I do know my way around the tree a lot more than I know my way around that spiky room from Hotel's Castle. So this should be no problem at all. Just keep on going. Uh, want to jump over here, and of course past me would blow all the punies over here thinking he actually had to, but you do not have to. And we're good, we have made it, and I unfortunately did not get healed. But at least they are nice enough to give us the save block and the heal block right before the fight, so we're gonna go ahead and end it off right here. Next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we are going to finish off this chapter and fight the boss of chapter 2. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later! Good night. Hopefully the detonator doesn't go off between the 24 hours of the next video. Oh.